Hey guys, welcome back. Modi 101 here, and we are back for another Mondays with Modi. So last episode, we talked about GameStop not necessarily being the spawn of Satan as a corporation, but a capitalist company. Pull from it what you will. So today, I kind of want to talk about the employees that you guys interact with when you go to a GameStop. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I've said this before, but, but after I left retail... 20% of me was happy that I didn't have to deal with bosses anymore. 80% of me was happy I didn't have to deal with employees anymore. Um, just as a kind of a little recap, I was a store manager of GameStop for four and a half years in Game Crazy, which is like GameStop for six and a half years, seven years, six years, something like that. So um, I had quite a bit of employees come through. Now, generally, a lot of the time, and, and I've seen some comments where where uh, people say, well, you know, the GameStop employees work for GameStop, so the stuff the GameStop employees do reflects on GameStop. And you're right. It does reflect on GameStop. But these are also human beings who make choices. Now, let's say you want to get a job at GameStop, right? And it's a lot of people. A lot of people would love to work in a place that, I mean, you know, you talk about video games all day and you play video games and all this stuff. The problem is most of that's not true. Work, and this is where I see a lot of, of uh, YouTubers that are complaining about GameStop, especially when they were ex-employees. This is where I see the problem. And this is actually where I see a lot of the complaints about GameStop is when it comes to the employees. So <clears throat> people have this misconception when you work in a GameStop, and I've said it before, that you're working in kind of a, a club, like a clubhouse, a place that, that because you go there as a customer and you talk about video games and they've got interactives and, and you see all this stuff, people just assume that the job is going to be like it is when you're there's a customer, except you're getting paid. How great is that? You hang out at GameStop for 15 hours a day anyway. Why not pull a paycheck out of it? The fact of the matter is, is that working in GameStop is 100% a sales job. It's no different than working at a, a car lot. It's no different than working really anywhere you do sales, anywhere that's retail, but it's sales-based, okay? So... What that means is, is that, and, and, and don't get me wrong, there, there's a gray area here, and there's parts of this I really dislike, but I'm trying to kind of open up people's eyes to the misconception of working there. The sole reason you're getting hired is to sell. And as we talked about last episode, um, selling the hottest, newest game, it's not a sales job. You're a cashier, you're a clerk, you're you're somebody who works at a, a convenience store where people just bring the stuff up, you ring it up, you send them out the door. That's not what the job is. You do that a lot, but that's not what the job is. The job is, honestly, is, and this is where you, your success in this kind of job, if this is something you want to get, um, really kind of derives from is, instead of taking the excitement about video games and wanting to have a job where you just get to hang out, if you take that excitement to the customers and and in reference to sales. So uh, we talked about pre-orders. Okay, we'll start with that. So pre-orders, um, though they don't generate a ton of money because you can only pre-order new stuff, i.e. new games, and we talked about there's only about a $5 profit. The idea behind... Um, the pre-orders is, is to not only get you to come into our store to buy stuff, but also bring in your trades. We talked about this before. Trades is everything. Used is everything in this company. And, you know, that's the advantage they have of some, seeing some place like Walmart, uh, where you just got to go in and pay 60 bucks. I mean, everybody freaks out. Oh, GameStop's games are too expensive, but new they're the same price everywhere. Used, they're kind of around the same price most places. 
Um, but yeah, the, the thing is, is that having that knowledge about upcoming games is pretty important. It is a sales job. It's a job you have to do a little bit of research um, about stuff. So if you go into it not knowing about games, it's not saying you can't do well, but you still want to be able to put in the work. Um, but yeah, a lot of people get really frustrated. Oh, I hate going to GameStop. The minute I walk in there, I've got some kid in my face, blah, 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 telling me this, telling me that, and telling me this. And there's kind of this holier than now, like, this kid at GameStop doesn't know more than I do. So he shouldn't be telling me anything. All the person's doing is letting you know what's coming up. The funny part is, is that you can, you can reserve or not reserve. That's up to you. It's your money. It's your choice. But it's their job to let you know what's going on. Um, and then there's also the power-up card. Now, I'm going to take a minute to talk about the power card. First of all, I understand the power-up card is changing. So I'm actually not talking about the future version. I'm talking about the version that's been like that ever since I worked there and beyond that. So <clears throat> the power-up card, for those of you who don't know, is 20 bucks. 20 bucks a year. One time, 20 bucks, boom, you're done. And what it does is when you trade in games, you get 10% more store credit. When you buy you used games, you get 10% off. Um, you accumulate points that you can buy stuff online, that whole thing, you know, stuff was kind of dumb, but that's just me. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and then also you get a subscription to Game Informer Magazine. Now we are gonna have a video later on talking about the changes that GameStop is currently going through. But the, the stories I'm telling right now are more about during the time that I was there. So you have this $20 game. So let's say you trade in uh, $50 worth of games, you know, three, four games, whatever. You trade them in and you want to buy, Red, I don't know why I keep using Red Dead Redemption. I don't buy games that much. So uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 <coughs> and you use it 55 so without the card, you're going to get 50, you're going to buy the game for 55, you're going to spend $5, including the games. Cool. Okay. You got a game for five bucks and stuff that was collecting dust on your shelf. Um, and, uh, but when you have the power up card, you get $55 in store credit. And then you get that $50 game for 50 bucks. You've got the exact same transaction, but you made five bucks that, that, that five bucks that you were going to take out of your pocket and pay doesn't worry about it anymore. Plus, the cool thing is, at least where I live, where most places is, store credit doesn't have tax. So it's like, oh, the grocery store. You're great. Um, so it's five bucks. One transaction. You do that four times in a year, you made the money. The magazine's free. So, but getting back to the employees. Now, one of the big things I see is that, once again, like I said earlier, there is a certain level of a responsibility when it comes to the company in reference to the employees. But to be dead honest with you, they've got what five to seven thousand stores. We talked about before each store has five, six, seven people. The CEO doesn't know everybody's name. He's not gonna, he does he doesn't care. That's not his job. Uh it's a store manager's job. Now the thing I found is really the difference between a good game stop and a bad game stop is the store manager. Not the DM, not the RM, uh, district manager, regional manager, but is the, the store manager. Um, how much they're doing their job. You know, if you've got a, if you've got a crappy experience with somebody, then, uh, you know, that's somebody that manager has hired and should know how they are. You know, that was always one thing that I kind of kept an eye on. Now, trust me, there's, you, unless you're in the store 24 seven, standing over every employee, you're not gonna catch everything. But that was something I really kind of strive for, was to make sure that my staff was good. Um, but the problem we run into, and this is gonna bleed into probably the next couple episodes, is that most GameStop employees are jaded. Um, they're pissed. They are, uh, and and one of the reasons, uh, deep down. Now, one of the reasons that they're pissed is is uh, the fact that once again, like I said at the beginning of the video, they thought this was going to be a hangout job. This they thought this was going to be 
playing video games and, and in the same way that hanging out in their bedroom with their friends and playing video games or hanging out with their friends online and playing video games that they were just going to get paid for it and they get to the job and they realize that's not the job and they get real kind of pissy about it always, always used to drive me crazy because I would do interviews and I would tell people this is not a fun job it can be it's fun with the employees and stuff but this is a job you're getting paid for it then you see employees that are complaining about pay it's never snuck up on anybody. I do the interview, I offer them the job, I tell them what the pay is, period. And they can choose to not do it. I'll be honest with you, it's not a hard job. It's not. You're not out in a coal mine with a canary on your shoulder just hoping he doesn't fall over. This is a, this is a job that you hang out in an air conditioned building and alphabetize things and tell people about new games and try and get numbers. Now, if you're bad at sales, or you just don't want to, yeah, it's a crappy job. But I see so many times people complain like, oh, my boss was such a jerk. I mean, yeah, I didn't hit my numbers, but you know, he didn't have to be mean about it. It's his job. If you can't hit those, if, if, if your job was to be an electrician and you decided that you weren't all that into wires, so you just put you know, the, the electrical sockets in the wall, but you didn't want to mess with all those pesky wires. You wouldn't be an electrician for very long. That's the job. That is the point. That's what they were hired to do. I kind of want to be a crappy electrician now. Because I can put those little boxes and I can, I can nail out 30, 40, 50 of those a day. Remind me to look that up later. Anyways, so so yeah, basically, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a sales job. Now, any decent manager is going to let that person know. This is the job. This is what expected. This is a criteria. Do you want it? And it's real simple to say, no, no, I don't want that. That's not what I thought it was. That's not what I'm interested. In. That's not what I think I'll be good at. I don't want it. Great. Have a good day. See you later. That's great. Hey, the job pays this amount of money. I need to make more than that to sustain myself. So I'm going to look elsewhere. Awesome. Good luck, I, I'm fighting for you. Every time I would do an interview, that would happen. But every time, they're convinced in their mind, regardless of what I'm telling them, that this job is gonna be some video game summer camp they're going to, and it's not. You have to make sales, you have to offer things. Now, a lot of time, when well here, well, I'll get into that in a second. So the other big thing, and this is what's gonna bleed over into some other videos is, is that, um, one of the biggest things that I found that, that jaded most of my employees and myself, honestly, wasn't corporate. Wasn't the district manager, wasn't the regional manager with the employees. It wasn't, sometimes it was me, but most of the time it wasn't me. The thing that really burns a lot of people out, I'm going to be dead honest with you, is the customers. I've said this a million times. I would work at GameStop every day. I would work 10 hour days seven days a week if I never had to unlock that damn door. If I didn't have to unlock that door and let the outside people in, I would love that place. Oh my God, it would be amazing. But that's not how it works. I've yet to find a job like that. I look for a job, a retail job that doesn't let customers in. Make a mouth some note of that. Look at that, I got two career paths looking. Do -do 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 -do. Um, anyways, so, uh, yeah, the customers, and we're going to get into some conversations about customers and different categories of customers. Um, and it's not everybody who walks in. <laughs> but you got to keep in mind, if you're the guy or girl that goes in, maybe asks a couple of questions, is inquisitive, wants to buy a game, you know, you're awesome. You're awesome. The problem is you don't know about the 300 other people in between your visits that are just awful working retail will a lot of the time completely change your viewpoint on humanity i've seen people get into retail that are just the happiest just chipper little pixie humans flying around all excited all the time right and then they work there for like three months and they look like like something just like creepy out of like a a, a tim burton movie 
just uh, eyes sunk in and they're they're like they're walking with a cane but they're like i don't know 22 or something like that it, it takes so much out of you so um when i look at retail very much as a give and take and i understand that if you ever have a problem an issue um a, a situation that comes up to where uh you're having your game's defective or whatever else even if it's something that is outside the policy of the store and this isn't just GameStop this is just in general people um you know there's the old phrase you 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 attract more flies with honey than vinegar and what that means is is that you know I know it's intimidating because it's 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 David and Goliath it's you against this big company and you're coming this big company's only function in life is to screw you the little guy over and, and get at you and stuff like that really what it comes down to is when someone was a jerk i didn't go out of my way to help them yeah golden rule man golden rule that's how i did it you know uh let, let's say somebody come came into the store and i'm, I'm kind of skewed off into customers now but it, it kind of goes with the employee thing somebody comes into the store and says hey look uh i bought this new game uh, for my kid, I bought it a few weeks ago. It was for his birthday, um, and I gave it to him. He opened it. He, he said it was cool, but whatever. I don't even know if he ever played it. I'm not looking to get my money back. I just got the wrong game. He won this, and I got him that. You know, and uh, you know, is there anything I can do? Generally, at that point, you know what? As a store manager, I can make the call to say, you know what? I'm going to return this game that is outside of policy and take care of you. You came up, you were cool, you were fine, you know, you were you were cool about it. I'm going to take care of you. But you come in lying. Oh, your employee told me this game, or this was open when I, or all this, all this garbage. And you can always tell because people generally lie and talk way more than they need to. Anyways, I never worked at GameStop. I'm kidding, I worked at Um... But yeah, you know, I mean, they, they would, they would, uh, if you come up and, and you're, you know, you're just, you're just going full Karen, you know what I'm saying? You're just going, you're going absolute Karen and you're coming in right off the bat and, and, you know, you just walk in there. I'm like, Hey, how you doing? I'm Modi. And they're like, uh, oh, can I speak to the manager? Which I loved because nobody thought I was, I mean, look at this, look, look at all these. You think you said, this is manager quality. <laughs> um, mind you, I worked there many years ago when this wasn't as acceptable. Um, <clears throat> I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm the manager. Ooh, they hit it. I'm, I'm skewing off into customers. I'm skewing off into customers. Anyways, they would come in and just come in hot and come in pissed off thinking that's how they get stuff. And uh, and yeah, it, 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 I didn't go out of my way to help them. I wasn't excited to be like, sure, you just crapped on me. Let me do what you want. So... But yeah, with the employees, you get very jaded on that. And um, so a lot of time, you know, I, I know it's just, you know, you're like, oh, well, if they're getting hundreds of crappy customers, you know, what is me being nice going to do? I'll tell you right now, somebody going in and, and you know, they come up and say, hey, is there any games you want to pre-order? And you say, uh, what's coming out? And they say, oh, this game, this game, this game. Be like, okay, cool. I'll think about it. You know, that alone. That, that five minute interaction where you let them do their job, maybe you'll learn something. Maybe there's a game coming out that you didn't know, you know, or that you didn't think about or you forgot about, you know? Um, they, uh, you know, that can change a hundred crappy customers before you. That's always a big thing. You know, you, you, you're golden rule, man. I mean, treat others how you want to be treated. If you come and treat an employee like a jerk and be a jerk to them, they're going to be a jerk back and they're going to treat you that way. I mean, that's, that's common sense that nobody gets. <coughs> this whole squeaky wheel gets the oil crap is so annoying. So, but you know, and then a lot of the time there's just, when it comes to employees, there's just straight up crappy people. I have had people that were just, like I said, you know, they got into the job because they thought it was one thing or the other and they come in and they're just bad employees. There would be people who would be 
if I was in the store, oh man, they were out there. They're helping customers. They're organizing things. They're washing the feet of the poor and the meek. You know, I mean, they're going full. And then I walk out the door and I turn into a monster. And they're just jerks to people. By the way, I love firing people. So it didn't bother me that much. But yeah, I mean, there were so many times that, that, that I would even go to other GameStop as a manager. In uniform, they knew I was coming. Let's say I need to pick up product. I need to talk to that store manager. I was giving them a hand, whatever the thing is. And I would walk in and these employees would just have this attitude. And I'd just be like, hey, how's it going? Hey. You know, and I just, I was like, oh God, can I fire other people's employees? I can't. I found that out. Found it out the hard way. We're cool. We got it. But yeah, you know, if you're working in this place, stay off your goddamn phone. That's not what you're getting paid for. You know, organize things, clean things. You're going to organize the same thing over and over. You're going to alphabetize the wall, and then a tornado of children's going to come in and <laughs> screw the whole thing up. Okay? And then you have to organize the damn thing again. <sighs> you're good. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is a sales job. You know, uh, reserves and... and, and pre-orders or it's the same thing pre-orders power up cards this is what's expected at the job and you know what it's not a hard job it's not a hard job i'll tell you right now if there's anybody out there who ever wants to work at gamestop or works at gamestop or ever worked at gamestop if you just ask everyone if you ask everyone that comes to the door hey do you have a power up card and they say yes cool done and that number doesn't count against you and if they say no you know hey well if you want to get one it does boom 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 and you plant a seed and you walk away and you let them look around was there any games you were reserve looking to reserve you know there's a bunch up here in this in this book if you want to look through them boom if you do that every single time every time without fail you don't have somebody come in and, you know, they're a 12-year-old kid, and you're like, oh, they're not going to buy the power-up card. I'm not even going to mention it. Why not? Mention it. Also, get used to the word no. You know, I looked at it, you know, you, you get, what is that, that phrase? You get a 0% of the, oh, what is it? Basically, the whole concept is, is that if you don't ask every time, your numbers are going to be low. And if your numbers are low, you're going to get fired. And you can sit there and, and make yourself the victim in this and like, oh, well, you know, they told me what the job was. They told me what the pay was. They told me what the expectations were. And then I didn't do that and I didn't try hard enough and they fired me. What the hell, GameStop? GameStop is the devil. No, you're just a crappy employee. So, I'm sorry, I just, employees drove me crazy, and employees of a lot of places that just get this attitude drive me nuts, and I see every one of the YouTubers that do this talk about, well, the company's doing bad because they don't treat their employees right. The company's doing bad for many reasons. That ain't one of them, okay? And, you know, you're doing a bad job because you're boo-hoo, this wasn't what I thought. So, but yeah, you have, I had employees stealing from me. I had employees stealing from customers and I knocked that crap down ASAP. I'm very proud of myself that I have not cussed this episode. I'm telling you right now, this is, this is, I told you early on in the series, there was going to be rants. This is one of them. So yeah. So, I mean, if, if you want to get a job at GameStop, hell, if you want to get a job in retail in general, Understand what the job is, what your your position is for, and do that and then collect your paycheck. I always get people like, oh, well, you know, they, you know, especially managers. Oh, well, you know, our bonuses got cut down. I mean, I put in all this work at GameStop and what did they ever do for me? You know what they did for me for four and a half years? They paid my rent. They paid my electric bill. They fed my children. They paid my car payment. They paid my bills with a paycheck I had medical insurance god I miss medical insurance I'm pretty much just goo inside anyways yeah you know that's what I got I got a paycheck god I miss paychecks sometimes but I also hate living in the house so 
All right, this video was all over the place. This was super rant, super everything else. I'm probably gonna touch back on this. I hope I didn't leave too many hanging parts on this, um, but we are gonna get into, <laughs> if you liked this video, not only hit the like button, but strap in because we're gonna start talking about customers soon. And there's gonna be some stories in there. There's gonna be some funny stories. There's gonna be some enraging stories. There's gonna be some stories that very possibly you might go in the backyard, find a piece of lumber and beat yourself among the head with it. <clears throat> but other than that, good times. Good times, wouldn't, wouldn't change a thing. Whew, I'm so glad I don't have employees. I do not miss that. Anyways, guys. All right, we're going to wrap it up there. This video once again went way longer than I had intended. Um, my last GameStop video didn't do that great. I thought you guys might be kind of jazzed about it, but maybe this one will do a little bit better. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. I love the comments. I'm just letting you know, in this series, I read every single comment. So you guys need uh, just down there, even if it's like, hi, Modi. Or just tell me an experience, you know, you had with an employee and, and things like that. I love reading that stuff. Really love reading that stuff. So uh, once again, thank you guys so much for hanging out. Hope you liked it. If you did, you know the drill. Hit that thumbs up. Uh, click that subscribe button. Um, it makes Heather happy and she scares me. So you could. She's the pinky and the pinky in the beard if you're new to the channel. Um, also, uh, you know, hit the subscribe button and click that bell. Uh, that way, because our videos aren't daily, you know, that way you don't miss out on anything. And uh, go check out our Patreon. It's, uh, it, it helps us get more gear. There's some kind of cool things in there. If, if you kind of dig and you want to help support. And lastly, and I don't know if it's going to be in this video necessarily, but very soon, uh, Heather and I are launching a Pinky in the Beard uh, Spreadshirt. So if you want to get our logo on a baby onesie or whatever weird things Heather put in there, uh, you do that by checking that out. So, all right, guys, once again, until next Monday, uh, this was Mondays with Modi. I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.